So there's two experiments. The first one shows that it's it's not um, the liquid being sticky and the ten and its tensile strength pulling it through the siphon. And the second one shows that atmospheric pressure is absolutely vital to the operation of the siphon. And so to summarize on that, I would basically say that if you wanted to correct the definition of um, a siphon in a dictionary, you could do it in two, one of two ways. You could say first that it's a uh, it's a tube that takes a liquid from one container to another. Um, it's driven by a difference in pressure, and that that difference in pressure can be generated by gravity. There's one definition. If you want to be a little bit more technical, you could say that it's basically a tube that runs liquid from one container to another, um, controlled by Bernoulli's equation. And of course, pressure difference and great, uh, gravity turn up in that equation. Now there's one really nice killer experiment that you can do to prove that it's atmospheric pressure and not tensile strength in the liquid that um, makes this siphon work. And while you've been watching this, you've probably been concentrating on the fact that the water goes from here down to there, and not so much on the fact that it actually goes up first. And if you believe that it's due to atmospheric pressure, you can use a thing called Bernoulli's equation, you can do a calculation and work out what the maximum height that you can take the liquid up before you have to take it back down is. So I can make this go up just a few centimetres like I have here, and I can make a version of this where I go up a metre, and I can make a version of this where I go up 10 metres, and a version where I go up 100 metres, and I shall see if all those siphons work. And if you do the calculation um, knowing the uh, density of water, gravity on Earth, and the pressure of the atmosphere, what you find is that you shouldn't be able to go any more than about 10 metres up and come back down. And if you make your siphon higher than 10 metres, it should stop working. Uh, as you can probably tell, my office is tall, but it's not that tall. I don't have 10 metres in here, so I'm going to have to make this the subject of another video that I'll post a little bit later. But it's interesting to think about what would happen for the alternate hypothesis here. Imagine that it's really driven by tensile strength. How high should the liquid be able to go? It's a tough calculation to do, I suspect, but we can get an estimate, and the place where we can get an estimate is from the tallest tree in the world. Why do you say that? It's a rather interesting thing to think about, but a tree is really just a siphon. But for a tree, it's a very special siphon. Rather than having a rather thick tube like this, which is much larger than the size of the molecules of the water, and that sort of cohesion between the water mo molecules doesn't really matter very much. In a tree, it has very, very fine capillaries, and they're what allows it to pump the water higher than 10 meters. It no longer has to rely on um, Bernoulli's equation and that sort of pressure effect to drive it up the tree. It drives it up by the tensile mechanism, which is basically what Stephen Hughes is referring to. So the tree is pumping this uphill by the tensile, not by a, this sort of siphon mechanism that we have here. And if it could do that to an unlimited height, we'd have unlimited height trees. So the fact that we have a tallest tree in the world kind of suggests that there's a maximum height that you can make this tensile strength push liquid uphill um, using that mechanism. And so the tallest tree in the world um, is in um, north Western California. It's a redwood tree, and it's on the order of about 100 or 120 metres high. And if you search your way around the world, be it Australia or America or other continents, you'll never really find trees that get to be much more taller than about 120 metres. There was a paper in Nature about this last year. And so what's going on there is you've now got a limiting height for how high you should be able to pump your siphon using tensile strength. And so now you've got a really nice experiment. You should be able to set this up. And if you make a siphon that runs somewhat more than 10 metres high, but less than 100 metres high, let's say we want to make it go up 20 metres and then come back down. If it's atmospheric pressure and gravity that drives that siphon, then the siphon shouldn't work. But if it's tensile strength of the water that drives that siphon, as Stephen Hughes is claiming, then that siphon should work. And so what a really nice experiment that I'll do for a future video, I'm going to have to do it outside the building and suspend my hoses from a couple of floors up is to take my siphon and start it running nice and low and raise that loop up higher and higher and higher and when it comes up through about 10 metres that siphon should stop working and I should be able to keep raising it and that siphon shouldn't start again. That will prove that it's due to atmospheric pressure and gravity. Um, if it keeps going higher than that then it would be due to tensile strength. It'd be interesting to see if anyone manages to beat me to this experiment but I should be able to do it in a couple of weeks from now so um, stay tuned for a second video on this topic.